Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And this one, which I brought one, so if you're the person who's the fashion model, <laughs> and this one it tells you, it was Perestroika, Glasnost, and De Demokratia, you should say it better than I, which is written around here. And Gorbachev had these struck in 85 to tell the Soviets he was serious about it. And um, I still feel very privileged to have some of these. And this one, because you're the fashion model, you wear. Now, Thank I have you. some more of these at home. Okay. And if we need some for some of your audience, because believe it or not, I still have thousands of Russian medals left from those days. Very Whoa. good. We need them all. Yes. <laughs> and one last thing I will tell you. I spoke in Africa. The same people who did the Inno Summit, a number of them were involved with it a conference in Africa on inclusive youth involvement, growth, and innovation. And I got invited to speak, and there were 400 people. And I took those medals with me because they're trying so hard to fundamentally make change in Africa. And I said, in 85, Gorbachev had that medal struck. Who would have known? In 91, the Soviet Union would change forever, and the, and the wall would come down. And it was really cool because a bunch of the people in Africa wore them for the whole conference. So that anyway, awesome. now you have to wear Thank it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, great. So we're going to talk more about modeling. I know that at some point my um, younger um, uh, intern yeah. has to leave because he has to go to what is this called special hours to sleep, right? You're going to bed, I hope, by 10, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, completely, by 10. <laughs> 10. I, I, I'm, I'm always in bed by 10. It's okay. a Saturday night and he's 10, a young 12, person. 12, okay. 1, 2, he's one of those 16. some <laughs> hours between that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, nevertheless, uh, we're going to come back to our uh, show. And thank you, Ashwin, for modeling for yeah. this wonderful close. This we're going to speak to Maria in Russian language because she is Russian all the way from Moldova. Is that correct? Ukraine. Ukraine. OK. Oh, from wow. Ukraine, yes. Wow. And then uh, uh, oh. I had so many phone calls today. I was on the phone whole day since 10 o'clock in the morning. And it's like nonstop because we have so many shows preparing. We have Celebrate Women March 8 coming up. Luckily, my gentlemen will gonna pick up the show, but still we have to do arrangements before the show, during the show, and after the show. But during the show, I will be taking time off. I don't know about you girls, ladies, but I will be taking time off. You're welcome to help those guys here. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Yeah, just in case. Yeah. yeah, just in case, but then we will continue with our show. Great. So I know we have a big tape recorder here in the studio. What is that all about? Um, this is this is a very strange thing. Um, this has, is a cassette tape that I recorded in probably 1986. And I had lost it. It had been in storage for all these years, and I just found it. The recording at this spot where I have it queued is a man named Andrew Morleone. And he was a go-between between, between Kennedy and Khrushchev during the Cuban Missile Crisis. Uh, he was a representative of the Vatican, and he tells the story of what he said to Khrushchev to get him to turn the ships around. So when we met at the Inno Summit, I said, I've got this. Nobody's heard it. I just found it. And I meet Olga, and she says, well, I have a radio show. Let's play it. It's scratchy. The tape is older than half of the people in this room. But shall we give it a shot? Yes, uh, so where is this okay, uh, here we go. Uh, uh, coming the sound? Coming um, sound, I think oh, we're where's coming, the sound from here. coming from. Right. Yes. That we were guilty in having killed Christ, eh? remember? He was 80 yeah. years Christ old. Said we, uh, we killed Christ, we're guilty. No. Uh, second thesis then, the Russians themselves don't believe in their own ideology. Third thesis. I am naturally after the phone call with uh, with uh, Khrushchev and getting those ships back there. Dick Jobber, that Khrushchev said, but Father Mon, I understand you very well. I take back the ships because I had told him, Khrushchev, I must uh, make it down. Uh, through <laughs> translation, eh, to translation, it was no Russian, it was Shumaiko. There is a secret influence that nobody knows. You might know if you are very wise. But don't you think that Arbatov and don't you think that Alexandrov and Zukov are the main men? Since 30 years, the grey eminence is called Shumeko. And he's not known. Officially, he is the editor of the Labour Union newspaper, Truth. Very dear friend of mine. He was the one who did my job. 
to get uh, Grushka on the phone in one minute, eh, on the phone. And Grushka said, when I had uh, explained to him, Jack Kennedy has told us that he can't back down, and you heard it on television, because he had said television, if the ships cross the line, I will have to end them yet. And there will be one billion, two hundred million dead in the first week. And that's objective truth, the, the scientific. Now, Mr. Nikita, Hitler only called, si killed 60 million. That's wrong. And Stalin only killed 40 million, because Stalin didn't make the war. Uh, 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 Lenin, uh, uh, Hitler made the war. You, do you want to be the greatest criminal in history? But have been killed one million two hundred one billion two hundred million. And furthermore, do you think that it is right to prefer an ideology above the life of your wife and woman? Because you will be killed too. A uh, woman or children, you will be killed too. And he <coughs> answered exactly without any but Father Morgan, don't you know I've been educated in the seminary? And I became a communist because my brother, who was in the same seminary, by a spy of the Tsar, who was a priest, because the, the, the Tsar used the priests as spies, has been accused of being against the Tsar, and they finally killed him. And then I became a communist. So, I understand very well that you must prefer life above ideology. And I will take back the ships immediately. So, there is in the communist, the communist third thesis, in the communist Soviet theory, the human nature that is stronger than the ideology. <coughs> and ideology is withering away. Fourth, after the seven, but I finish, after the all these things, amongst thousands of meetings, I go to dinner, I go to the lunch and to meetings with Dobrynin at least three times a year <coughs> since 19, since the, because he called me to say uh, I had Khrushchev on the phone and he has uh, agreed to, to your request to liberate the bishop of a Ukraine, uh, Slipoy, you know, the, uh, the man who was in prison for 19 years. He has agreed. But Shall we uh, we send him? This and, is, uh, I got a half an hour of this tape. Okay, so let's uh, stop and uh, so tell us about